So that means someone had it before they had it. And it was brought here for a purpose. To get the black man away from him to the realization of who and what he is. And it went from the yellow sea to the brown sea and ended up with the black sea. When he born this nation, he was what we call today a young boy. He was. Father was 40 years old in his last moments on this planet. He was a young boy. But look what he born. I had years, I had now to myself the same amount of years the father was on this planet. But he came by himself. A lot of people knew that there was a law. Well, like you see that movie, The Matrix, they all had knowledge, but they were waiting for what? For one. And the law was that one. And he came and made that knowledge born. And he born this nation. And even though I spoke about that lesson, which is one of our lessons today, is three. Let it be known that the greatest lesson that we've got ain't for the baby, it's for all of us. Mathematics and the alphabet. If a nigga's 60 years old and I start teaching him, the first thing I give him is the mathematics and the alphabet. That's what we live by. Today's mathematics is wisdom, God. That's either because you're a wise God, or today it might be because you're the wisdom or the woman of God. But no matter how you're born, it, you're going to be born. But there are many manifestations of mathematics. Wisdom God might be one thing to you, but it means something else to me. That lesson I quoted is the way I see it, but that was my lesson. One of the three degrees is not only the wisdom of your what? Cipher. Understanding your cipher. My cipher is not the same as yours. My interpretation of them lessons is not going to be the same as yours. If I smoke crack, that was the devil's head that I had to take. If he drank wine, then that was the devil's head he had to take. If this nigga like running around with hooking instead of finding a good woman, now the devil's head that he had to take. So whatever your four devils are, you have to find out and you have to take it so that you can be the sphinx. So what is the sphinx? The man that tames the beast. So the beast is not on all four of them. He's down. Meaning he been tamed. That's conquering the devil. That's when they say the son of man or the son of God does battle with Satan or Saint John. With the Arabic and European translation for the word Set. And Set is the name of an African God that is symbolic to the lower nature of man. When man's lower nature takes him over, he becomes a savage. He's a beast. He's the beast on all four, ready to attack the spring. But when Haru was born, he wanted to kill Set to stick to his father. We didn't set to kill his spirituality. He had to be born again to remove my ISIS, which is only that part of himself that rebirthed him into a new being that he became. Actually, in all reality, what he was born to be. <laughs> but Jehudi said, no, you can't kill Seth. You can't kill the devil. Not Seth, the original devil. That's the only thing. Y'all 
know in nature is different, and they talk about revelation. When you get to battle with the beast, that's you. You get to battle with the beast, and you, you have conquered your beast. You know all of this, you have to many things. Some got to conquer drugs, some got to conquer alcohol, and they even got to conquer food. Food is another devil that we got. That we got the master. You used to talk back in the days about making characters in this nation. Like some people would come up. Yo, boy, you can't speak. You got to eat meat. You got to eat meat. Man, don't eat. You don't drink. Don't eat. Don't drink. Don't eat. Don't drink. Don't eat. Don't drink. And you ain't got to eat no meat. I did all that to me. I did everything, God. Don't poke the price to, to, to pork, the beef, the chicken, the fish, the turkey. I don't eat none of that now, God. I'm vegetarian. I know that. I'm vegetarian. You walk to my house, God, and out anybody can eat. You know, you eat righteous food, righteous food, you can get it. But I'm not eating nothing that's dead because when something dies, what do you do? I cremate. Other people bury it. But you don't eat it. <laughs> you ever look at a cow? Imagine you take a bite out of a cow. Go up to a cow and take a bite. Go up to a pig. Grab a fish out of the water and take a bite out of it. But that's what people do. But they cook it up. Because food, cooking food is tricked out. Because if you take the food you eat, let's say you got a cake, and you take the flour that cake is made out of, and you separate all the ingredients in that cake and take it down to it. If you separate all the ingredients and try to eat one of them by itself, you couldn't do it. As soon as you hit your tongue, your tongue will spit out. Your tongue ain't eating no raw flour, raw sugar, raw salt. Your tongue, your tongue is your defense mechanism for your body. When your tongue, tongue tastes it, you gotta spit it out. Because your tongue is telling you, it ain't no good for me. But you got to deal with trick knowledge. And trick knowledge means what? to tell the tongue a lie. Yeah. You trick the, trunk, the tongue because you cook your food and prepare it in a way where it tastes good. So you trick your tongue into thinking that it was good. But when it gets in your body, you end up with what? Cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart condition, cancer, and any other disease known to man because of the food you eat. Like many of our ancestral doctors say, there's only one disease, therefore there's only one cure. Every disease out here is only a manifestation or a symptom of the real disease we have, mucus. Mucus is our disease. <coughs> so without mucus, you can't get sick. Because germs need Bacteria need a home to infest. They got to grow. They need the soil to grow in. And bacteria grow in mucus. Your immune system must be strong enough to defend you against these invading germs and bacteria. But our immune system is broken down. Why? Well, we want to brush our teeth. And what do our toothpaste have? Toothpaste have it. Fluoride. What is fluoride? You know when they can't kill rats, what they call resistant rats, you know what they use to kill them? Fluoride. Fluoride. But yet they got it in our toothpaste and we give it to our babies each and every day. When you wash your hands, you get your earth, joy, palm olive, and all them different dishwashing detergents. Why? What makes them good? Because they leave her hands soft. Why do you think it leaves her hands soft? 
because it breaks down the molecular structure of the body. All those things are here to destroy and break down what? The commercial tell you, grease. The grease on your pan, the grease. We made up a grease. Fatty substances. So when we touch that, it is breaking down our substance. Our fatty substances. When your hand wants this and it get hard because your skin is reacting to that and thus it, it, it develops a defense mechanism which it makes your skin what? Hard, more able to sustain the pressure that you put in it. Ammonia, if you drink ammonia, you go die. <laughs> if you drink bleach, you go what? Die. You drink pine, you go what? Yeah, because they what? Poisonous. But yet you clean your house, and you, sm you what, what smell are you looking for? Ah, the ammonia. The bleach. I made everything white. My house smells clean. But yet, if you can't drink it, what the hell makes you think you can breathe it? Mm. You taking it in in the most finest substance, it's now gas. It's microscopic particles that you inhaling right into your lungs, going straight to your brain. How fast can you kill yourself? <laughs> Think you why you got rheumatism and arthritis. You breaking <laughs> down your own system by trying to be civilized, according to European culture. Cleaning ourselves the way they clean themselves. Brushing our teeth the way they brush their teeth. Eating the way they eat. When the slaves were first brought here, some of them slaves were 200 years old. But the white man looked at them, they looked at themselves. They think they were 40 years old. But he might have been 90 years old. They don't know how old them slaves were. They were old people they brought here. They thought we were young. But that's how long we live. And my proof, you ever watch them programs? Here, God. You ever watch them programs about an old lady? And they make a, 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 a story about her because she lived 130 years old. An old black woman. You ever seen that story? Well, oh, lived 130 years old. She was a slave. <coughs> you know what slavery means? Do you know what they did to all women in slavery? Could you imagine, or try to imagine, being a black woman in slavery? Raped, abused, beat, forced to work from sun up to sun down out in the fields. They gotta raise your children and raise your husband. You know what I'm saying? Imagine going through all that and living to be 130 years old. How long would you have lived if you lived in peace and happiness? If you lived in your <laughs> own homeland? If you was eating your own food? that grow and flourish in Africa. See, they got, you got to study your history. Realize how great our ancestors were. Even the ones that were diminishing their civilization status. Their status was diminishing. Because the Europeans came and did it. We're not the only ones that they dog, God. They made slaves out of Africa too. Africa didn't escape nothing. People think that they were in Africa, they had the knowledge of them. Africa.